Alrighty folks, today we're going to talk about writing claims, actually developing claims by synthesizing some ideas um, and coming up with a thesis that's that's nuanced and well developed. So the specific skill we're working on is this last in our unit one, which is to develop a paragraph that includes a claim and evidence supporting that claim. Um, and as a reminder, this is sort of what we're looking at as a, as a whole when we're taking a look at a, a big work of writing. So we have sort of our introductory paragraph, an idea that's outlining what our main idea is, what our thesis is. Um, and then we're going to continue to support that with kind of smaller claims, smaller, smaller ideas um, and reasons that back up and support this main idea. And each one of those claims or reasons needs evidence to support it. So when we're writing our initial thesis, our, our big idea, remember that claims need to be defensible and arguable. Um, basically think of these as, as controversial statements that someone could agree or disagree with your statement. Um, it can't be a statement of fact. I um, mean, usually these can be an evaluative statement. So as we're going to see here, um, running is better than walking, right? That's an arguable statement. That's controversial. People might not agree with that. Um, but I couldn't say running is faster than walking, right? That's not an evalu evaluative statement. I'm not giving my opinion or my judgment um, on this concept. Um, and then lastly, we've whenever we're writing a thesis, it needs to be able to be proven with support. So. Um, I have to pick an idea that, okay, based on this evidence, um, I can prove to a certain extent that this idea is correct or that I'm thinking about it in this way because of X, Y, and Z. So let's take a look at some a simple example and then a more complex example. So walking, it's a subject, what we're talking about, is superior, and that's the evaluation. There's that evaluative claim that makes this controversial. Walking is superior to running because it's less strenuous on the body. And then take a look at this more nuanced one. This is about our George Bush 9-11 address. So George Bush's purpose in his 9-11 address to the nation, that's the subject. The purpose in this man's specific speech, very detailed, very specific, is to dismiss the effects of terrorism and to reaffirm our strength as a nation to the world. So there's kind of a two part claim. What he's doing with his purpose in this speech is to dismiss the effects of terrorism saying like, you tried to shake us, but you didn't. Um, and then to reaffirm our strength, not just strength to the American people, but strength as a nation to the rest of the world who's watching uh, the United States response to these terrorist attacks. So there's our claim. Uh, people could argue, this is arguable because um, someone could say, well, I think his purpose was slightly different. Um, I think it was more closer to this, right? But it all comes down to how we can defend and back up this idea with evidence. So whenever I come up with a, a claim or a statement like this, um, think of that as my my reason. Here's what I'm, here's my subject. Here's what I'm talking about. Here's why I'm talking about it. Um, I need to come up with evidence to support that. And then I have to explain, here's the tricky part. Um, so I've got, here's my idea, here's my support for that idea. And then I've really got to get into how this evidence supports the claim of this, you know, if we're thinking about a smaller body paragraph, how does this evidence back up my topic sentence to this paragraph? And then how does this even more widely connect back to our thesis? Um, I have a, a pretty strict rule that my quotation has to be the shortest sentence in my paragraphs, if that makes sense. Basically what it tries to force me to do is if I have a quote here, you know, that's two lines long, I better spend about four lines explaining why that quote is relevant um, to my claim, to my topic, to my thesis, how it connects to everything. Um, and remember that this order can vary, right? It doesn't have to go claim, evidence, explanation. Um, you might start with your evidence, explain it, and then that leads into your claim or, or vice versa, right? Um, this is just the basic outline, how you decide to put it into practice or a, how an artist and a, 
author decides to put it into practice is is up to them. That's their personal preference. And that's really what we're getting into when we're talking about the artistic elements of rhetoric. What do they choose to do and why do they choose to do it? So take a second here and review. Okay, what did we learn about claims? What's some of the paragraph structure we should be looking at? Take a minute. Got it? Okay. So to review, if you didn't just, um, claims must be defensible. You have to ask yourself, okay, why am I saying this? Um, is this a statement of fact or is this something that could be argued? And then in writing, we're really looking for claims, evidence, and explanation. So what do I think? Why do I think it? And then how can I prove that this idea actually goes back and supports my main claim or my main thesis?